What's up YouTube? So before we get started with this video, on first take, they're going to be talking about whether or not Kevin Durant will be able to return from his injuries and be the same player. So let's see what they have to say about that. You are in charge of things and you could keep just one player. Would it be Clay Thompson or Kevin Durant? Clay Thompson. Guys can come back from an ACL. It, 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 it's almost impossible to come back from an Achilles. No one's really done it except Dominique Wilkins. I want people to understand this. This is not like, of course, I hope KD comes back. And, and certainly the feeling is, oh, he'll be back at, you know, within a year, within two years, he'll be back to being some semblance of himself. Really? I mean, that'd be great if he can do it. But he'd be the second guy in the history of the NBA to come back as most of himself. And by the way, he'll be entering his mid-30s by then. Okay, so that's KD. And by the way, what if KD comes back as a guy who really can't play defense because of the Achilles but can do most of what he can do offensively? That's still an all-star. Let's say it's a Paul George minus. That's a really nice player. It's a really good player. Is that a Supermax contract type player? Clay Thompson is, you know, we always say top five shooter. Stephen A will say top five shooter. Steph Curry's the greatest shooter of all time. Clay Thompson's top five. Clay Thompson might be the greatest shooter of all time. I mean, I, he's certainly in the conversation for greatest shooter ever. And he's a hellified defender, by the way. And he is, you, you like game on the line? How do you feel about Clay taking the shot all day? Clay's also younger than KD. And he's been a warrior the whole time. He's one of the original Splash Brothers. Ryan Hollins, if KD, if he was coming back from the kind of injury where, yeah, there's a really good chance he gets back to being KD, my answer would be different. But he, he, that's not the case. The answer is Clay Thompson. So I'd have to say, um, uh, I'm, I'm all about loyalty. So I would probably sign Clay Thompson before I signed Kevin Durant because Clay Thompson's been there the whole time. You know, he's been there through the thick and thin. He could have left, but he stayed, even though they were winning the majority of the time. But as far as that, um, so as far as Kevin Durant, um, I would st I think Kevin Durant can still come back. So I think Kevin, he probably won't be 100%, obviously. But I think Kevin Durant's maybe 94 to 97%, if he can max that out when he comes back, that's still going to be other players is 100% by far. So I think he, he can come back. I think he'll be okay. Will he be 100%? No, I don't think so. Because, I mean, you're injured. You, you get cut. You have surgery. So no matter what, you're not going to be 100%. Even if you're 99%, 98%, you're not going to be 100%. But I think he can still come back and contribute and do all the things that he needs to do. Uh, he just won't be, as we already know, 100%. But like I said, I have something about loyalty that, uh, you know, Clay Thompson's been loyal. He's been, th been there through thick and thin, never complained. So I would probably, if I had to, I would pick Clay. But, you know, my business sense of just being smart and making the smartest business move, I would probably go with Kevin Durant because there's something to be said about being a seven footer that has a jumper from anywhere in the court. There's something to be said about that. And you can't pass that up, even if he's hurt. Because like I said, if, if, if Kevin Durant comes back and maxes out about 94 to 97% of what he was before, that's easily going to be 100% for most guys in the league. So let's keep going. Hey, do you know what a unicorn is? Sure. You know what a unicorn is? Something, yes. something you've just never seen before. Doesn't grow on trees. There's not many of them. You know what that is, right? Mm -hmm. a, a seven foot guy with a handle, dribble, can dunk over you. Okay. That's minus dunk over you. Possibly, possibly. There's no question that you keep Kevin Durant. And I hate that if you're the Warriors, if we're even throwing out the hypothetical of having to choose. This is a guy seven feet tall who can dribble, beat you, knock down shots. And might I add, I played with a seven-footer who could shoot the deep three, who could shoot contested shots. And he played about 100 years in the NBA and probably could have kept playing. I'm talking Dirk Nowitzki. Now, the one thing you talk about is an Achilles injury, something you can't come back from. Have you watched Rudy Gay lately? Because Rudy Gay looks really bouncy, really springer. And we're not going to springy. And we're not comparing this to Kobe Bryant. See, Kobe Bryant had both knees, both shoulders, elbow. You can name any injury that Kobe had at the time that he went down. But if you look at Kevin Durant, he is a surefire pick to be able to play. Not to mention, look at what he did in the, in the finals. He essentially didn't. If you want to know what he might look like, look what he did in the NBA finals. Kevin Durant came out 
in about 10 or 12 minutes of action and had 9 to 10 points and was literally unstoppable. What? Just doing what, Max? Standing there and shooting threes. So if I got... So let me jump in real quick. So I, I do believe Kevin Durant played for 12 minutes. He got 11 points and went three for three from the three-point shot. That's some serious damage in a short amount of time. And you guys are trying to tell me that Toronto Raptors would have beat the Golden State Warriors if they had a healthy Kevin Durant or a healthy Klay Thompson. I mean, you saw how much damage Kevin Durant did in, 11, in, in 12 minutes. And he was still hurt. So let's keep going. I just had to throw that in there. Pick a no. guy that I need to that I gotta keep on my team. I'm going Kevin Durant all day. No, bro. no. In fact, Kevin Durant wasn't just shooting threes. His passing was excellent. He was great in that 12 minutes or whatever it was. But really great. The problem was then the Achilles popped. Why? Because he has to start and stop. The idea that he can just be a spot-up shooter when he gets back from the injury and he doesn't really need the same kind of athletic kind of springies that other guys need. It's just not true. It's not the way, as you know, or maybe you don't. Basketball is played in the NBA. <laughs> but, but, but the truth is, Rudy Gay is a very good uh, observation. Rudy Gay uh, has yeah. come back as a very serviceable player. But once upon a time, he was seen as a guy with real star potential. And now he's seen as a serviceable player. And that's the point. When guys come back from this injury, even Dominique, you got to take something off of where they were. So take something off, make him 33 by the time he gets back to where he's you know, where he's the best version of whatever he can be. You're going to have to take away a lot of the defense. That's usually what happens after this injury. You're going to have to take away some of the offense. I'd rather have Clay. So, if so again, I would I'd probably go with Kevin Durant because, like I said, he's not going to be 100% when he comes back. That's to be expected. So he might hover around maybe between, like, maybe, you know, 90% to maybe 97% maybe a little bit higher, maybe 92% to 97% of what he was before his injury. But again, he's a seven-footer that has to jump from anywhere. That seven-foot with the jumper from anywhere, that makes up for a lot. That makes up a heck of a lot for the things he probably, or that he may have lost with that injury. So I, I would definitely still have to go with Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant is still going to be able to put in work. And as far as him being 33 or whatever the age Max said it was, that's not really a fact for me at this point because he's still balling. He's still able to move. It's not like he has arthritis in all his knees and his arms and his shoulders and all that. So age isn't really a factor. But I think, like I said, I don't know if Kevin Durant, he probably won't come back at 100%, but I think he can hover in the mid-90s percentage-wise of what he was before he uh, got hurt. So I think it should be okay. I think he'll be okay. But let's continue. I'm going to take away some of the defense. Would you rather be a guy that's 6'4 or a guy who's 7 feet? Because keep in mind, four? I know KD would list himself as 6'9. When I yeah. see KD, I'm a true footer. We're eye to eye, brother. He's a yeah. true 7 footer. So at worst, what? He guards a power forward? You're not sliding Clay over to the position to guard a three or a four. Clay is you six want him seven, brother. Guard. Who's six four? Clay is six seven. With Clay low arms. six seven. Hold on, Mr. Hollins. Clay Thompson is six seven all day. Clay Thompson is six seven all day. Let's continue. Clay well, Thompson you... is not six seven. He's, he's an not NBA not... six seven. Whatever you want to call that, he's an NBA six seven. When, when... Okay, look, so like I said, Clay Thompson, he's 6'7 all day. Whether Clay Thompson is 6'7 with shoes on or he's 6'7 without shoes, he's 6'7, okay? So let's just leave it at that. He's just nowhere near, he's 6'4, okay? He's way above 6'4. But like I said, he's a 6'7 with shoes on or he's a 6'7 without shoes on. So I hope that makes sense. So let's continue. If when you look you at other dudes call themselves 6'7, Clay's as tall as them. Hey, when you had to chase him off a screen, how tall was he, Max? <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. You never met you never met no Clay Thompson. Will you stop it? Chase him off the screen. <laughs> Would you play him in Summer League? Ryan. Well, that's the, this is Ryan, the, this Clay is the thing. Is not, Listen. Look, what's uh, James Harden? How tall is James Harden? He's listed James six about, five. James about six five. Six okay, five. you're telling me Clay Thompson's not two inches taller than James Harden? No, he ain't no two inches taller, dog. He ain't no he's two inches taller, James dog. The he point no is, inches. he's a legit, not just three and D wing, but a guy who can also get his own shot better than other three and D rings wings. Get to places that other guys like Danny Green, who I always say is a nice approximation, can't.
can't get to, and he can get hotter, Clay Thompson, than anyone who ever lived. That's why he has the most points ever scored in a quarter when he dropped 37, and his second highest quarter total of the same season was 26. That dude, who's coming off a less catastrophic injury, should, and who's younger than KD, and who's an original splash brother, is the guy you gotta keep. Do you not... I think it depends on what you need if you're gonna go with Kevin Durant or Clay Thompson. But like I said, I'm all about loyalty, so I would resign or I would go with Clay Thompson before because he's been through thick and thin. I could trust him. He's gonna be around for a while. He's arguably one of the best shooters ever versus going with my business sense and going with Kevin Durant because like I said, there's a seven he's a seven footer with the jumper from anywhere. I mean, he's a scoring machine, an absolute scoring machine. So I think it just depends on what you're looking for and how you look at things. But you, you can't go wrong with either of them. I'd rather I, I'd rather take both of them than have to decide. So I don't know. Let's keep going. See the longevity in being seven feet? Because I think you're mistaking this. There's a premium at Kevin Durant's size, at his height, at his abilities, at his you're just, shooting. You're just you're just putting it on a tee for me. I know you played in the league for uh, 11 listen, years. Listen, what listen. are you talking about? So what? So okay. Kevin Durant switches out. Let's go defensively. Played in the league. He, yes? <laughs> See, now, I, I know they're playing games and all that. I know this is me just crying over about stupid stuff. But I don't, you know, Ron Hollins isn't my favorite uh, sports reporter. As a matter of fact, he gets on my nerve most of the time. But I don't really like when people clown him about, you only played three minutes, you know, in, in the NBA. That's all you got. You only played three minutes a game for the 11 years that you played in the NBA. I mean... Ron Hollins may be trash and garbage in the NBA because you only play three minutes a night or whatever, but he'd be trash would work anybody out in the street. He would work anybody out in the courts, anywhere. So I don't know why people trash Ron Hollins. He did multiple years in the NBA, no matter what if he played three minutes. He's still better than 97% of America, maybe 99% of America. So I don't necessarily like when people trash Ron Hollins. Now, I, you trash him for what he says, some of the things that you know he thinks about and all that. But as far as being a player, I would not be saying anything to him unless you played a professional sport for as long as he did. You would wish to be able to play in the NBA and only play three minutes a night for multiple years. That's why that's just kind of makes me mad. Because like I said, if you haven't played a sport, then you can't clown anybody, let alone try to clown Ryan Hollins because he played three minutes a night with the basketball team for 11 years. That's good. I would take that all day every day and be happy with it and be bragging. But I don't know. That's just my little stupid rant. So let's continue. <laughs> he switches out on uh, Van Fleet, right? Yeah. There's a possession. Van Fleet clearly has a speed advantage. KD's hobble, uses his length, spaces, get a contest. As a matter of fact, talk some trash to him after it happens, brother. So listen, there is no question here. If I'm the Warriors, if I'm any other organization, I'm taking a hobble Kevin Durant. As a matter of fact, if I'm signing a KD contract and I'm any team, you, you go blindfolded. You go five years, 200, 300, whatever.